Hi, welcome in this third episode of Back On. Today, I talk about Dropkick Murphys. I've seen this band on the 14th of June 2014 at Celesta Stans Matin, the weekend before my back exams. What a good idea to go at a punk concert. Anyway, the show was very good. Let's talk about the two bands I saw on stage. Four punk bands. Folk punk rock, or Celtic punk rock, is a style of rock that appeared in the end of the 80s. It fusionates folk instruments, pipe, banjo, and punk rock due to the live performance, to the punk instrumentalization, and to the show's ambience. The first part was played by the Moorings, folk punk band inspired by Dropkick Murphys. The Moorings formed in 2007 in Celesta. It's also a French band. Its five members choose nicknames. It's fashion in punk rock. His musicians are also singer and guitarist lumberjack style D. Phil Jelly, violinist Sophie Ann Pudwell, guitarist Nicky Sigboy, drummer Didi Jr., and bass guitarist Matt Capon. The band plays in festivals, punk bars, and plays first parts of more famous bands all over Europe. They released the first album, Pint and Glory, in 2011. It's very good, and even if folk punk style is seen and reviewed, the band has its own identity with songs like Friendship. There is a cover from the Flogging Molly on this album, What's Left on the Flag. At the end of the concert, the classic of Moorings show begins. Fern Tagelivon, a good French punk. The band was great, and it's time for the guys from Boston to go on stage. Dropping Murphy's is already impressive by its number of musicians. A singer, Alba, bass guitarist and singer Ken Cassey, two guitarists, James Lynch and Tim Breman, drummer Matt Kelly, multi-instrumentalist Jeff Darosa, who plays mandolin, acoustic guitar and banjo, and P player Scruffy Wallace. The band started in 1995 with bass guitarist Ken Casey, singer Mike Malcogan, drummer B. Close and guitarist Rock Barton. From these musicians there is only left the bass guitarist and leader, and in 1997 the lineup already changes. Current drummer Matt Kelly is here. The band want to play a new style, fusion between energy class and ACDC's rock and Irish music. The style they play is a festive punk rock. The band releases some splits between 1995 and 1998. A split is an album composed of songs of several bands, like a compilation. That's a cheap way for beginners to launch. Split is especially present in punk and metal. The band is on tour and start being famous. Dropkick releases its first album in 1998, Do or Die. Singer Mike Colgan and guitarist Rob Barton quit the band in 1999, quickly replaced by Alba and James Lynch, current singer and guitarist of Dropkick Murphys. The band releases its second album with its new lineup in this same year 1999, The Gang's All Here. You know, at time, the band has still a really punk sound with its lineup singer, bass guitarist, guitarist and drummer. In 2001, it's a new way for the band that engaged a mandolin player, Ryan Falls, a P player, Spichu Magis, and a new guitarist, Mark Oil. Sing Loud, Sing Proud is released in 2001 and it's the beginning of Dropkick Murphy's really Celtic and folk sound. P player Joe Delaney replaces PC Magis and the band records Blackout with its infamous song Kiss Me I'm Shitfaced. Mandolin player Ryan Falk is replaced by Tim Brennan and it's Scruffy Wallace who inherits from Pep while the band starts being famous and have a real commercial success. It's in 2005 that The Warriors Code is released, considered by fans as the greatest album of the band, with the hit Chipping Up to Boston used on the Departed original soundtrack, a theme by Martin Scorsese. We hear Tessie on this album, a cover from the Boston Red Sox fan in. Many reporters say that Dropkick Murphy's Celtic punk rock is extremely refreshing and positive, unlike hardcore punk. I talk about this punk rock evolution later. It's also in 2007 that the band releases a good album, The Meanest of Times. New changes in the band before the release of their seventh album, guitarist Mark Orwell kids Dropkick, and it's Tim Brennan, mandolin player of the band, who plays as second guitarist. Add to this that Dropkick Murphys engages a new mandolin player, Jeff Darosa, and you have the lineup I have seen in 2014. The band's success is rising, and they play in 2009 with Bruce Springsteen, 
who played in Boston, and Ira Smith, the other famous band of the city. The band releases in 2011 the very good Going Out of Style, and it's in 2014 that the great Sign and Sailed in Blood is produced. This album is one of his awesome albums with hymns like Boys Are Back, Rose Tattoo, The Season Upon Us, Don't Tear Us Apart, and End of the Night. In 2015, B-Player's Scruffy Wallace quits the band. Dropkick has been sometimes called skinhead, sometimes neo-nazi, during its career. That's the problem of people that don't know anything, treating Nazi the guys that listen to metal and punk because their music is violent. Punk has always been against politics extreme right. Like the French punk rock Berry et Noir says, la jeunesse emmerde le Front National, extreme right in France. Most of punk bands don't convey political messages. Or prefer extol anarchy like anarcho-punk band Sex Pistols. For naming Skinhead, you've got to know that Skinhead movement, even if it knew drift, isn't a racist or neo-nazi movement. These drifted are also against Catholicism, and Dropkick's members are all Irish Catholics. It's all a debate, but the fact is that people that are misinformed always talk too quickly. The fact remains that leader and bass guitarist of the band, Ken Casey, is a good man who prefers more baseball and drinking than politics, like all the members of Dropkick Murphys. It's the end of Bacon's third episode about Dropkick Murphys, and if I made you discover this band, I'm very happy. I know punk is very criticized, but there aren't any pleasant that folk punk. It is with ska punk, the opposite of some hardcore punk bands. A fourth Bacon is about to come this month, so be connected. And don't hesitate to subscribe to the channel.